Rob Skinner from Scout PR. So welcome, Rob. Hi. Tell us a little bit about what you do. Right, well, we, we do PR, but we do it slightly differently to um, how a lot of uh, companies do. We uh, help companies find what we call their natural stories or natural story assets by foraging within their businesses to find things that they don't realise are there or stories that they don't realise are there. So, um, you know, often PR is uh, uh, involves quite a lot of fabrication um, and what we do is try and avoid that and actually find the things that are, that are real within a business but are often uncovered um, and need the business needs help to, to kind of bring them out in the open and turn them into a really strong media story. Now you've described this to me as natural PR. Yeah. So what would be the opposite? What what are you kind of fighting uh, against in a way? I think I think it's the, the whole kind of stunt culture in in PR. That's what we're fighting against, really. You know, there's a lot of money spent um, on. Uh, effectively fabricated stories that you know we see as you know generally they're kind of one hit wonders really they give you that kind of two minutes of fame and, and nothing more because you get remembered for the stunt but nobody really remembers what you do as a company mm. um, it's just you know the flash in the pan type mm. approach so it's almost done for the sake of publicity rather than it actually adding to the yeah. brand or the, the values you want to be associated yeah, so, with so my belief is that really if you want to you know if you want people to take away through media coverage they want, you want them to take away exactly what you can offer them as a business that media coverage needs to contain what you do uh, very very explicitly mm. and that's about really putting your product or your, or your service into the PR that you do mm. getting journalists um, and the media really close and hands-on to to your product whatever it is and there's lots and lots of ways that you can do that mm. And, mm. You know, and, and, and find ways of doing that mm. from within your business but it's also more cost effective. Um, in today's world, people don't have um, endless PR budgets. Um, and while there's a sort of seductive uh, draw to do some kind of sexy stunt, actually when, you, when we start to bring out the real natural stories within businesses for clients, they, they find that even more seductive mm -hmm. because they, they don't realize that they're actually sitting on these, mm -hmm. these assets. So you've been described um, as the Ray Mears of PR. <laughs> you, you, you're, yeah. able, you're able to find things in, in an environment that others can't see. So just expand on that a little bit. Okay, so really it's, I mean, it, you know, it's not rocket science, but it's about you know, being inquisitive uh, and, and questioning the norm um, as much as you can. Um, and really that's about investing time, getting to know the client, getting to know the people within the business, you know, spending time hearing the, the side stories, you know, having informal conversations with people within the business and not, you know, not just always sticking to the agenda. Mm. Because that's, it's only when you do that that people then start to talk about the things that they haven't naturally thought should be on the PR agenda. Mm. And you can always guarantee that somewhere within all of that will be the best story. Mm. And this um, is what you describe as foraging. It is, you're, yeah. You're foraging call, for material. Or for forage, yeah. Mm. So you can liken it to Ray Mears type scenario where it's all about survival really mm. it's all about you know finding uh, the natural resources that are out there that mm. you can that your business can survive mm. on that many others are blind to absolutely yeah. and yeah. we you know we found actually you know PR isn't isn't historically known as a you know as a, as a direct lead generation tool uh, but we found through our approach that uh, our clients do feed back to us a lot and mm. they do see direct leads and inquiries from the big pieces of coverage that we get them uh, mm. because they really, really do spell out what the company does and the reader can see, you know, that, I mean, actually, yes, I do need that. I need that service. I need that product. I can mm. see the benefit uh, of getting that into my business. Is there an example that you can give us of someone you've worked with uh, that, that you've generated yeah. a great outcome for? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, there's quite a few. But one that sticks in my mind particularly is a, a company we work with called V Life. Um, and their really their sort of hidden story was was about data. They were they were sitting on a lot of, of data that they'd collected through their uh, through their online tools that they provide um, to companies. Um, and we were able to pull that data out of the organisation, and, and with our advice, they they analysed it, and we were able to help them find. Um, some really strong angles and stories in there mm. and take those to the media. 
Mm. Which um, particular sector are we talking about? It's health and well-being. Right. So it's all about their product is a, a tool which is used by large corporates. It's given it's given to their employees as a health and well-being tool, mm. help them monitor and manage how well they are basically, so mm. they can they can improve their personal health. Mm. Um, and it, as a result, they have lots of information on things like sleep, stress, uh, level of physical activity, uh, but it hadn't been tapped into. Uh, we were able to help them pull the stories out um, and because it was real live data, a large, large volume of data, utilising that within the media and, and a careful approach in terms of selling it to the media um, helped us achieve page lead coverage for them in the national media, in the Sunday, uh, Sunday papers um, where they were getting in the, you know, the top 10 pages um, and getting full page mm. coverage as a result. Mm. Um, which, you know, for a brand, relatively unknown B2B brand, it's not the sort of place they expect it to be and it's really kind of changed their view and opened their eyes mm. as to what PR can do as part of their marketing. So is there, a, is there a final message, Rob, that you would give to businesses who are thinking about using PR? Um, yeah, I think my, you know, my final message would be, you know, always look within, really. Um, now, you know, while I say that, you, you know, there is always a strong story within every business and don't think you have to kind of, you know, sugarcoat everything, you know, and look outside the business um, for your stories. Um, but the important thing is that you do need somebody with an external view um, that can look into the business. We find that a lot of business owners and, 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 and marketing people within businesses are so, you know, so, so focused on and close to the business that they can't always see these hidden gems. Mm -hmm. What we do is really have that sort of stand back approach where we can say, uh, you know, with a long distance approach, yet yeah, a long distance view, yes, there's something really mm -hmm. there that, that, mm -hmm. that warrants. Because you're also more with. aware of what, what's going on in the wider PR world. This you know, is it. There's a particular interest in that type of story at the moment. They wouldn't necessarily know that. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a balance of being able to see long distance into their business, but also you know, having an, ex an external view as to what's, you know, what's going on in the world mm -hmm. and what's of interest mm -hmm. to the media at the moment. Right. So the answer lies within? It does. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. <laughs> Cheers.